report. Today we have exciting news on the fastest car in the world, the Bloodhound, as well as getting behind the scenes information on Alder Hayes Children Charity and what the six formers here at Ashton have done to help raise money for them. We also have information you need about solar clips and what happens. Firstly, I like to see the flood out. I'm Sarah and I'm going to be part of the BBC Store Report. I'm going to be asking numerous people about the Bloodhound SSC and what it is. What is this car? This is a car called the Bloodhound SSC and it's a land speed record that we're aiming to get up to a thousand miles an hour. It's created by a, a guy called um, Richard Noble, who's our project director, and he held the was, was project director for the last land speed record as well. And when he finished that, so actually I'm going to go even faster. That was back in 1997, and since then he's been coming up with this design, uh, thinking about how exactly we're going to do it, and how we're really close to running this car. We're going to be taking this out to a place called Hatskin Pan in South Africa. Uh, the reason we're using it is it's, it's perfectly flat. We've got a 12 mile racing track out there. And over the whole 12 miles, the, the height varies by less than 61 millimetres. So it's really flat, and we've got a perfect surface on that. The current land speed record uh, car is a car called Thrust SSC, and that mine is 763 miles an hour. We have got competitors trying to beat us though to this 1,000 mile an hour benchmark. We have one called North American Eagle, and that's, uh, that's not managed yet to date, but it's still trying to get up breaking a land speed record. And our main competitor is a guy called Roscoe McLaughlin, who is a car called Aussie Invader, and he is a real competitor, he could get to 1,000 miles an hour, so it is a race, we're trying to beat him to, to that goal. Thank you very much. What did you learn about the car? The most interesting thing I learned about the car is that the front of the car is like a yeah, and it's actually 3D printed by Titanium. I'm Swan, and thank you for listening to our score on car. Tomorrow at around 9.30 in the morning, there'll be a solar eclipse, and we're all very excited. To help us discover more, we early spoke to our science teacher, Mr McGuckin. Can you explain to us how the solar eclipse happens and what happens during it? Um, during a solar eclipse, uh, it's one time during the year uh, whenever the uh, moon comes directly between the sun and the earth. So basically what we see is, or what we experience on earth is a shadow of the moon. One school has banned pupils from seeing the solar eclipse. What are your opinions on this? Um, I think it's possibly a little bit extreme for the school to ban the kids from seeing it because it is quite a rare thing. However, there are risks, definitely going to be risks to the students if they don't observe the solar eclipse properly. How often do the solar eclipse happen and why? Um, it's, uh, solar eclipses aren't as rare as people believe. The solar eclipses usually occur somewhere on Earth once every about 18 months. All right, so that's approximately twice every three years. How many people can see this and where in the world will they be? Um, it's the total solar eclipse itself where the entire disk of the sun is going to be covered is going to only be visible from a quite a remote area uh, of the Faroe Islands which is probably just north of the, of the UK um, another area I've called uh, Svalbard in Norway um, a, a land based area will also um, be able to observe the full total eclipse there um, however in most of uh, northern Europe eastern Asia uh, and uh, parts of Africa you'll be able to see a partial eclipse obviously the more further north you go then the greater the, the amount of coverage you'll be able to see off the eclipse. Where will you be at this time and will you see it? Um, I will be in school probably from about 8 o'clock so I would say whenever it starts to, to occur just after 8 o'clock I'll probably get a chance to see the beginning of it. Is it dangerous to witness with the naked eye and if so how can we prevent harm? Uh, it is very dangerous um, no matter what time of the year you uh, go out to, to do any sort of um, astronomy. It's very dangerous to, to view the sun with the naked eye or even with uh, things like uh, cameras, telescopes, binoculars. You should never look directly at the sun. Um, if you look at the sun even for short periods of time it can cause damage to the cornea on the front um, which can be very very painful. If you look at it for sort of longer periods of time um, it can lead to damage of the retina which can take between one month and up to a year to, to, to recover and could even be permanent. So it is very dangerous. Uh, there are very simple ways to observe the sun very, very cheaply by using things like pinhole cameras. And they're basically just a, a small piece of card with a hole in the centre. And you hold that in front of the sun and allow the sun to be projected through the hole onto another piece of paper. It's been a busy time for the sixth form at Ashland Mersey School and it involves cakes, balloons and lots of hard work. I went to find out more. Ashland Mersey School is calling you in a fundraising week for Older Hay Hospital. Okay, every year the sixth form students have to do a fundraising week and it's their choice as to which charity they choose. Um, last year they chose the Alex Hume Foundation because obviously he was a student at our school who unfortunately passed away. However, this year they uh, actually invited three different charities into school 
um, spoke to them about what they do and what work they do and then made the decision that Alder Hay was the one they wanted to support. So it was totally down to the students with no influence from myself. Do all the so what work do Alder Hay do? Okay, Alder Hay is a children's hospital um, that caters for 270,000 children mm -hmm. under the age of 18 who have anything from minor ailments to through to serious life-threatening um, diseases or, um, or illnesses. Uh, and basically they uh, have a Ronald McDonald house, which is next door, where families can stay when their children are in the hospital for long periods of time. So it's looking after people under the age of 18. How much money do the six farmers have intend to raise? Uh, this year we've set ourselves the target of £5,000 um, and that's from Monday morning at 8 o'clock through till 3 o'clock on the Friday afternoon, so just within a week, which obviously works out about £1,000 a day. Why did you pick Audley Hay as a charity this year? Uh, we picked it because it deals with sick children mm -hmm. and we feel like it's very close to most people's hearts.